Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. It's uh, Wednesday evening, Wednesday the 3rd of August. So let's pray as we come to the end of another day to give God thanks for his goodness and mercy in sustaining us and keeping us safe through this day. Let's pray. <clears throat> o God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The canticle is from Matthew chapter 5. So the refrain is, Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and shall be forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you, you hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Amen. And the collect for this evening. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation, to your glory, hidden through past ages, and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, this psalm for this evening is Psalm 11. Psalm 11. And the refrain for Psalm 11. The Lord's throne is in heaven. In the Lord have I taken refuge. How then can you say to me, flee like a bird to the hills? For see how the wicked bend the bow and fit their arrows to the string, to shoot from the shadows at the true of heart. 
When the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try every mortal being. The Lord tries the righteous as well as the wicked. But those who delight in violence, his soul abhors. Upon the wicked he shall rain coals of fire and burning sulfur. Scorching wind shall be their portion to drink. For the Lord is gracious. He loves righteous deeds. And those who are upright shall behold his face. The Lord's throne is in heaven. And the prayer. God of heaven. When the foundations are shaken and there is no escape, test us, but not to destruction. Look on the face of your anointed and heal us in Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Okay, so let me read the meditation for Psalm 11. Those who walk with God experience a range of trials, a few of which are mentioned in this psalm. They are told to flee to a mountain, verse 1, implying that they are vulnerable and unprotected. They are shot, or shot at, in verse 2, implying that they are the target of attacks, such as verbal ostracism. But God is in his holy temple, and his eyes see, verse 4. Nothing goes unnoticed by the Lord of heaven. He will bring justice one day, and on that day the upright shall behold his face, verse 7. Have you considered the promise? Have you taken it down deep into your soul? What does this promise mean? The term upright refers not to the sinlessly perfect, but to those who operate out of a basic trust in God, knowing their imperfections. Those who, like God, love righteousness and hate wickedness. Verse 7. What does it mean that believers will see the face of God? It means we will become ourselves finally. It means dawn will rise on the dark gray of this fallen world. It means final rest will be ours. It means we will be with the one of whom even the best earthly friendships are only a faint glimpse and to whom the most sublime earthly joys are finally pointing. As the very end of the Bible puts it in Revelation 22 and verse 4, they will see his face. Amen. We look forward to seeing the face of God when we will become truly human, fully human, and fully what we are created to be. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 is our evening, is our New Testament evening. Um, reading <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 12 <clears throat> All of it Paul says, I must go on boasting, although there is nothing to be gained. <clears throat> I will go to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body 
or a part from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise, and he heard inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than, I, than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I have made a fool of myself, but you drove me to it. I ought to have been commended by you, for I am not in the least inferior to the super apostles, even though I am nothing. I persevered in demonstrating among you the marks of a true apostle, including signs, wonders, and miracles. How were you inferior to the other churches? except that I was never a burden to you. Forgive me this wrong. <laughs> now I am ready to visit you for the third time, and I will not be a burden to you, because what I want is not your possessions, but you. After all, children should not have to save up for their parents, but parents for their children. So I will very gladly spend for you everything I have and expend myself as well. If I love you more, will you love me less? Be that as it may, I have not been a burden to you. Yet, crafty fellow that I am, I caught you by trickery. Did I exploit you through any of the men I sent to you? I urged Titus to go to you, and I, spent, and I sent our brother with him. Titus did not exploit you, did he? Did we not walk in the same footsteps by the same spirit? Have you been thinking all along that we have been defending ourselves to you? We have been speaking in the sight of God as those in Christ, and everything we do, dear friends, is for your strengthening. For I am afraid that when I come, I may not find you as I want you to be, and you may not. And you may not find me as you want me to be. I fear that there may be discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorder. I am afraid that when I come again, my God will humble me before you, and I will be grieved over many who have sinned earlier and have not repented of the impurity sexual sin and debauchery in which they have indulged all right that's it um chapter 12 you can 
hear the heart of Paul going out to these believers who have gone astray and they have been led astray by these false teachers that Paul call super apostles. You can hear the irony dripping from Paul's pen or his lips when he said things like, I was never a burden to you, forgive me this wrong. It's, it's, it's a sarcasm. Uh, um, it's as if you wanted me to be a burden to you because these people that you are elevating, they are milking you for everything you have. I never asked you for anything, so I must have been wrong. I should have, I should have really asked you for things. He says, forgive me this wrong. Is this a sarcasm? Um, and he, he, he talks about um, they, are, they, they are his children and he cares for them. He says, I will not be a burden to you because what I want is not your possessions, but you. I desire you. I want your heart. I want your commitment. I don't want what you have. I want your devotion to God. And, and and so on. And in the first part, of course, he talks about the famous thorn in the flesh, where he said, um, because of the because of the surpassing greatness of revelations that he received from God, uh, he started by talking about himself in the third person. He talks about a man. I knew a man some years ago, 14 years ago, whether in the body I don't know. Uh, you know, are out of the body, but he was caught up into heaven and so on. Paul is talking about himself, but he's using the third person to speak of himself because he doesn't want to boast. He doesn't want to boast about what God has done through him and to him. So he said, I won't boast about this man, but I will boast about myself in my weakness. He says, he says, verse 5, I will, I will boast about a man, I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except, except, because in my weakness, about my weaknesses. <clears throat> so he says, I am not going to boast about the revelations that God has given me. Um, I'm not going to boast about the things that God has shown me. But, but the fact is, this is my experience. This is what has happened to me. And you are listening to people who boast about all sorts of things, but they don't have the weaknesses that I suffer. And he talks about the fact that because of these revelations, God sent him a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan. Um, he said, it was given to me a messenger of Satan to torment me. And, and, and when he said he was given to me, he meant God sent it. God allowed him to go through that. This was God's doing. But of course, he didn't realize this was God's doing. And he was suffering. And he believed that he attributed his suffering to the revelations that God gave him. God gave him these revelations. But in order for God to, to keep him humble, he said, he said, because of these surpassing great revelations, there was given in order to keep me from becoming conceited, in order to keep me from, from being inflated with pride, God sent him a messenger of Satan, a thorn in the flesh, a, a sickness of some sort, a, a suffering of some sort. We don't know what Paul was suffering. It's, it's very likely a number of things. But as far as Paul was concerned, it was a thorn in the flesh. It was something that was that was annoyance to him. And, and he said he, he sought God three times, pleaded with God to take it away. But the Lord in turn said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So Paul says, for this reason, I will gladly boast in my weaknesses. I will, I will delight in my weaknesses in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And so Paul says, in my personal weakness, in my, in my physical weakness, in myself, I am weak. But when I am weak in myself, 
is when I trust in the grace of God and that makes me strong. And so he said, yes, I am suffering. Yes, I am going through insults and pain and suffering and, and so on. But in that weakness, I have learned that God's grace is sufficient for me. And I don't need to ask for the thorn to be taken away. In fact, it is because of the thorn why, my, why I am strong. Because when, I, when my back is against the wall and I have nowhere else to turn, God strengthens me by his grace. Sisters and brothers, there's a lesson for us tonight. When we have nowhere else to turn and we, and as it were, we have our own thorn in the flesh, our own weakness, our own suffering, whatever it is that we might be going through, we can know that God's grace is sufficient for us because in our weakness, we find his strength. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father and God, we thank you. We thank you for your all-sufficient grace to sustain us in our weakness in moments when we are weak when we are suffering in times of insults in times of of illness times lord when our bodies are frail our minds are frail our will frail we know we can trust your grace to strengthen us to sustain us to keep us and so like paul oh god help us to boast in our weakness because when we are weak in ourselves, we are strong in you by your grace. Give us your all-sufficient grace, we pray, tonight, every day, Lord, so that we may find your, our all-sufficiency not in ourselves, but in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue to pray for each other. We pray. Pray for my, our, our brother David, and we continue to ask God's um, blessing and God's grace upon him, that the Lord will strengthen David. As the Lord strengthen him, we pray in his weakness, in his illness. Now, give him your grace, we pray, so that he will be healed, that he will be restored, that he will be strengthened. And so, Lord, may he experience your all-sufficient grace. Now we pray. Pray for uh, Angela as she mourns and she and her family mourns the passing of her mom. And so Lord, we pray for the we pray for Angela and family. The family here, the family abroad. Watch over them, we pray. Give them strength in their time of weakness. And Lord, we pray. Help them during this time uh, of mourning. Comfort them, Lord, we pray with the comfort of your Holy Spirit. Strengthen them that uh, as they plan to say farewell to their, to their loved one. We pray, Lord, that you will be there with them at that very moment. Remind them that in Christ we are alive forever and that there is no more death. We look forward to that day when all, when all, when all sickness, all death, all evil will be eradicated from this earth. And this will be a new transformed world where there is, where there will be no more weeping or mourning or crying or pain for the old things are passed away. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we, we, we bring before God the word, the needs of the needs of our world and our own community. Lord, we pray that you will hear us for hear us as we pray for the for our own community for our church for the world in which we live oh god hear us we pray we pray for peace in our world we pray for an end to war we pray lord that you will bring an end to the war in ukraine especially that war lord destroy all the weapons of war we pray and bring healing and and hope to the people of Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe. Comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our night prayer, we pray for keep we pray for the others who are working tonight. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend to the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you. May the Lord protect you. May the Lord give you rest and peace tonight, sisters and brothers, from all the cares and concerns and anxieties of this world. May the Lord protect you from all pain and disease and give you his all-sufficient grace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers.